think I finally worked out the reason Kirk Hammett's playing's suffered the last couple of years. It's not because he's getting a bit older, it's not because his joints are failing him or anything like that. It's not even because he's not practicing. I think it's because of this pickup. Hey guys, hope everyone's well. You may or may not know this about me, and if you don't, well, whatever. But I really, really love EMG pickups. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I think first off, it really is something as simple as, well, my favourite bands use them. And, you know, they sound cool, so why can't I? Um, I think part of it is also, they just work for what I'm trying to do. They have the right amount of kind of compression in them. There's something about the mid-range that just works really well for what I'm trying to do. And I think it helps as well that, at least in, in my eyes, they just look cool as hell. But whatever, that last one's not important right now. If you know anything about EMG pickups, you'll know that they've got a couple of different signature sets for people. Um, James Hetfield from Metallica got one in 2011, I think. Uh, Lexi Lejo's had one for ages. Zach Wilde's had one since it's got to be like 1864 at this point. Um, Glenn Tipton's got a set. Gary Holt's got a set. If you're a big name and you use EMG, they've probably developed a signature set for you at some point, which is why I was a little bit surprised it's taken as long as it has to get some kind of signature set going for Kirk Hammett. I mean, it must have sucked a little bit to see that, you know, the other guys had him for like seven, eight years and you're just not getting it for some reason. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine anyway, because 2018, the year of our Lord, or at least it was at the time of recording this, there's a brand new EMG signature set just come out for Kirk Hammett of Metallica and it's called the Bonebreaker set. They have this ridiculous green cover on them, well, green font on a normal EMG cover, which, whether you're a fan of Kirk Hammett or not, I think is, is pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna deliberately not say what the difference is between this pickup and the EMG 81. I want you to listen to it with as fresh a mind as you can and get your own impression of how it sounds and how it differs from what's already out there. That being said, Let's find out. They're going to be loaded into my Custom Shop Jackson RR1, which has an EMG8160 set in it most of the time anyway, so it's going to be a direct comparison between those two. And we're going to see if there's any differences first off, and secondly, what those differences are. Thirdly, maybe we'll look at if it's better or worse as well. <laughs>
So, I hope you heard what I heard in that demo, because there's a couple of points that I want to make about the difference between the Bonebreaker set and an 8160 set. So this is an entirely subjective point, feel free to disregard this one entirely if you're so inclined, but at least aesthetically, the EMG 8160 set and an EMG Bonebreaker set are visually almost indistinguishable from each other. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think one of the difficulties that some people have with like signature gear is that it's really obvious who it's a signature for. Whereas, at least with the Bonebreaker set, just having a, a subtle difference in the green logo, I think is a really nice touch. If you know what to look for, you can tell what it is. But if you don't know what to look for, just a cool logo. But as I say, that's opinion, feel free to disregard it. If you like how EMGs look, these look like EMGs, so they look, you know, fine. If you don't like how EMGs look, sorry, you, you're not in the right place. There is a more limited set of bone breakers available. Um, the ones that Kirk Hammett has in his purple sparkle guitar, if you've seen that one, um, with kind of the chrome covers and like a laser etched um, signature of his, that's blatant. That I'm not so much a fan of, unless my name was Kirk Hammett, in which case it's pretty cool. But it's not, so not really into it. But the standard just looked like an 8160 set with a different logo. I think that's cool. But on to what you actually came for. What's the difference in sound, at least that I can hear? So, EMG are insisting that there's been tweaks to the preamp of an EMG 81 and an EMG 60A, which is the Alnico magnet version of a 60. Um, and they're saying because of that, there is a bit of a different sound that's still familiar as an EMG sound, but is something a bit new and a bit more Kirk Hammett. I definitely get that vibe from the Bonebreaker set. They feel like they're a little lower output than a standard EMG set. And they feel like they've got more of a hump in kind of the low mids area. EMG 81s have really quite a spiky high end, high mid range, about 4K if you're familiar with kind of um, you know, frequency charts or whatever. Um, 4K can be quite tiring to listen to and whenever I'm recording I do tend to kind of notch that out a little bit to take some of that harshness away. With the bone breakers, that's not quite as necessary because that's not where their focus is. Their focus isn't really on being able to cut through a mix. Their focus is on sitting within a mix and filling out the sound a bit more, which they do, at least I think so. Which I think is, is quite interesting, actually. The James Hetfield signature set is more focused on what is quite a scooped sound. There's a lot of lows, a lot of highs, not that much mids, um, at least in the pickup itself. The Bonebreaker set has a little bit less highs. Lows are about the same, to be fair, but the mids feel like they've got a little bit more of what's there. They feel more substantial and like they'd fill out what's left by the headset, which honestly is kind of adorable. The fact that Kirk Hammett, while designing his own signature setup, was thinking about his bro the whole time. <laughs> and about you know, what would suit complementary sounds rather than just what's best for him personally. I really respect that because I don't know if I could be that selfless during that process. I'd like to think I would be, but I don't know if I would. In terms of how they sound for lead playing, I was quite surprised with the Bone Breakers. I expected them to feel pretty much the same as an 8160 and that they don't, and that they feel Fuller, but also with more cut somehow, is actually really quite a nice feeling. I'd considered for a while um, whether I should keep the 8160 set as essentially a rhythm set and just drop in some bone breakers into whatever guitar I'm using just for lead passages. They work that well. I really, really like them for that. That's where I think the preamp tweaks come in handy because that's where if you put an overdrive pedal in front of your amp, with the bone breakers going into that pedal, the fact that they bring out more top end doesn't make it really harsh and fatiguing to listen to. It just makes them cut really well. And I, I think that's a really cool feature actually, that that was possibly what was thought of you know, when they were being developed in how can we use the tools that every guitarist uses and make it work 
better than what's there already. Honestly, I think it's a great move. There are some points I'd like to address though. I've heard a couple of uh, rumblings around the internet, let's say, that despite EMG holding out that there's been tweaks to the preamp and you know that the bone breakers sound a little bit different, that they're really just a repackaged 81 and a 60A, as I say, the Alnico version of a 60. I hear the people that are saying that and I know where they're coming from because they have much more influence in this kind of circle than I do. But what I have to say to them is, are you sure? Are you sure that there's been nothing changed between the 8160 or 8160A and a bone breaker set? At least from what I've recorded here, there is quite a significant difference between the 81 and the bone breaker bridge version more than I can account for just being the randomness of pickups, especially when they're active and have a preamp in them anyway. They're manufactured in such a way that at least EMGs are very, very consistent with one another. An EMG81 sounds like another EMG81. They're not the same as, let's say, more vintage pickups or even some passive pickups where you'll get two different pickups that will be the same on paper but just sound different for some reason. Now, unless I've got a complete lemon set, which I'm doubtful of, I can hear a difference there. And I can hear a difference even when I record the same thing twice, once with an 81, once with a bone breaker. Switch up which is which, get someone else to you know play them in a different order or whatever. I can hear a difference. Now, unless that's entirely psychological, and you, if you can't hear anything, then maybe I'm just crazy. But I, I definitely think there's a difference there. And I think it is definitely a different flavor of EMG. It's still very much an EMG. You know, it's not a radical departure, but it is different. There is something else that makes me think the Bone Breakers are an entirely new pickup design as well. And that's because when EMG signature sets are released, take for example, the Zach Wild set, if it's pickups that already exist, the Zach Wild used an 8185 for years. The Zach Wild set is called a Zach Wild set. There's no fancy name there. And okay, the, the pots that it comes with are a little bit different, but otherwise, it's an 81 and 85. The Hetfield set is called a Het set. It's got its own name. The Marty Friedman set, the new stuff, has got its own name. The Glenn Tipton stuff, new pickups, got its own name. Kerry King set, 8185 game boost, called a Kerry King set. All I'm saying is, EMG's got form for how they label their signature sets, dependent on whether it's just repackaged normal pickups or a new design entirely. And I can see which of those trends it's leaning towards with its own name of Bonebreaker. But that's sort of where what I can say about these pickups pretty much ends. There is one question that remains though, and it's the same question that always props up whenever there's any new EMG signature set. Is it worth it to go from 8160 to this? I've tried to answer that a little bit in this video. I think if you want something that's more vintage oriented, but is still very much an EMG, the bone break is gonna be really good for you. If you want something that's a little bit more controlled, maybe a little bit more restrained is the right word, then the bone breakers are gonna be for you. If you want something that's a little bit more out of control and a little bit more wild in that kind of really aggressive top end. 8160 is probably more for you. I wanna hear what you think though. Did you hear a difference between the 8160 set and the Bone Breakers? If you did hear a difference, which one did you prefer? Let me know, cause I, I genuinely can't decide which I prefer. And it does bother me a little bit that I can't work that out. I thought I'd, I thought I'd come into this with a really sort of definite expectation of that I was going to come out of it and say oh yeah the bone breakers are either amazing or terrible you know there's there's no middle ground but they they really are just a different flavor and one that I really quite like for lead stuff I think for rhythm I'm more prefer an 8160 but as I say for leads they're really good I'm going to stop myself talking now because I've said a lot of stuff that's useless. I'm going to cut out most of it. Um, so I think it's for my own good if I just shut them out for a little bit now. But 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for getting to the end of it. Um, if there's anything that you want to let me know about relating to this, drop me a comment, just let me know. If there's anything that you really hated about this video, leave a dislike if you want, drop me a comment, let me know what it is so I can try and improve it for next time. The entire point of this is, okay, for me to enjoy myself, but it's also for you to get something out of it by watching. And I want to be able to do that for you. So yeah, if you've got any contributions or anything, let me know. Let me know which of the two sets of pickups you preferred. Um, whether it was the 8160, whether it's the Bone Breakers, and why. I'd really love to hear more people's opinions on this. I've deliberately tried to avoid commentaries as much as I can, because I didn't want to taint my own impressions of it. But now I've done that, tell me what you think. Okay, I really am going to stop now, but again, thank you so much. I hope to see you next time, and take it easy till then. Whatever the reason, it's fine now anyway, because as of 2018, there is a brand new EMG signature set. And it's for the other guy in Metallica, and it is the King Hell. <laughs>